What's up guys, it's Sebastian Georgiou and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm taking you guys all on a journey from how I turned $300 into $100,000 in less than three years. All right guys, before we get started on this journey, I need you all right now to like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. As Graham Stephan would say, do it for the algorithm because this video is gonna be very valuable and it's completely free. So please just like and subscribe and leave a comment too, maybe. All right guys, so this is gonna be a really special video and a really great video because again, I'm gonna take you on the journey from when I was 16 years old, working at Taco Bell, selling muffins, vacuuming cars in 120 degree weather, and then eventually turning into like the e-commerce guy, the YouTube guy that you guys are all fond of. And I'm gonna be just taking you guys through the entire process today. Now, really quick, I just wanna say, I don't want anyone watching this to compare themselves to me and feel bad about themselves watching this video because that's not at all what my mission or what my goal is in this video is to you know make people jealous or whatever. Um, all I'm trying to do in this video is illustrate that everything that I did was possible and I don't feel like I'm special in any other way. I just want all of you guys to understand that it's possible and hopefully this video motivates all of you to maybe get off your ass a little bit and go and do this as well. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the entire journey starts when I was 16 years old um, and I really, really wanted to fit in because I grew up dirt poor. I know obviously I grew up with a single mother uh, and she never could afford to buy me clothes or cool shoes or anything like that. And I actually got made fun of in school for like not having the coolest clothes. So I wanted to fit in. I wanted to have friends. Um, I wanted to have my own money so I could buy my own clothes. And like one specific goal I was going for was an Infiniti G35, which was my favorite car at the time. I was incredibly money hungry. I was so, so motivated. When I started out, like I just said, I saw everything as an opportunity. And that's really the most important thing to success is always looking for an opportunity and then executing on it. And you guys are going to see that right now when I start talking about all of these dumb little side hustles that I did. When I was 15 uh, in high school, I had a brilliant idea to sell muffins. And I know everyone's wondering, why the hell am I gonna sell muffins? Well, you see, the school was selling muffins for a dollar and 50 cents. And I had seen these muffins when I went shopping at Costco with my mom and they were way cheaper. So I figured, cause the genius you know, in me was like, hey, why don't you buy these muffins and bring them to school in a little grocery bag and just sell them to the kids under the desks and like try to make profit this way. So that's what I did. And I was making 50 cents a muffin, which was cool until I got shut down by the teachers, but I still wanted to make money. I still wanted to buy these clothes. And so since that didn't work out, I immediately thought of different things I could do. At this point in my life, my net worth was about $300. So that's where I started off. And so the next idea I had uh, actually came from my girlfriend's mom who had made like $20,000 flipping furniture off auction sites. And I decided to do it with go-karts. So people would list these go-karts for sale. And I was like, that's a shitty looking go-kart. Uh, I bet if it feels really pretty, I could probably sell it for way more. And so I would buy them, wash them, sand them down, repaint them, put some pool noodles on them, and then I would put them back on offer up. And actually I would sell them for like 100 to $150 profit every single time. One time I sold one for $175 profit. And you know, as like a 16 year old, that's actually pretty good money. So after flipping all these items, the go-karts, doing some patio furniture and selling $10 worth of muffins, um, my net worth had climbed to about $800 at this point in my life. Once I turned 16 years old, I immediately got the idea to get a job and work legally since I was old enough to now. I started working at Taco Bell, <laughs> making chalupas for $8.25 an hour um, and just saving up every single dollar that I could, that I could save up. Uh, and I hated it and I wasn't making a lot of money either. Um, so I had an idea because one of my friends from high school was working at a car wash and he was making a lot of money. I had an idea to go work at a car wash. Um, and the thing is in Arizona, it's like miserable to be outside. Uh, and it's even worse if you're like doing physical labor. So uh, these people tip really well at car washes. Uh, and so like you can make like half of your day's money in tips on top of like your hourly wage. So I go to the car wash and they offer me nine bucks an hour. Uh, and the tips every single day in straight cash was like 20 to 40 bucks, which at the time for me was pretty good money. So I was doing that just vacuuming away my life for a few months until I decided that I hated that and I didn't want to do it anymore. 
um, because it was terrible. Uh, and so there's these other guys at the car wash that would sell windshields because uh, in Arizona, there's a lot of dust and there's a lot of rocks. And so everybody has cracks in their windshield and you could fix a crack and make money or you could sell a windshield and make a commission. So I was like, all right, I'm going to get into sales and I'm going to sell these bitches that are getting their cars washed. And I was making about 350 bucks a week, but some weeks I would make like 600 bucks if it was a really good week. Um, and that was really cool. But meantime, while all this was happening, I was religiously saving all my money and trying not to spend any of it because I had one goal in mind. I wanted to buy an Infiniti G35. I wanted to have a really nice car uh, by the time I became a senior so that I could impress all of my friends and uh, you know make all my girlfriend's friends like jealous and just like get all the clout. Fuck money now, it's all about clout. Well, it kind of explains how I become a YouTuber, I guess. <laughs> I've always wanted to get clout. <laughs> but no, I, um, I just wanted a really cool car and I liked cars. So when I was working Autoglass, my net worth had climbed to about $5,500. And um, like I said, I was religiously saving and I ended up making enough and finding a good deal to buy my Infiniti G35. So I went and I spent $4,800 on this car out of all the money that I saved. And I drove it to school and I was a total badass and everybody was jealous and everybody liked it. So mission accomplished there. But I had that car for a year. I ended up selling it for about $800 profit. And then I had the idea that I could flip cars or I could drive cars and enjoy them and then flip them for a profit. So I literally win, win, win. Um, so that's what I was going to do from now on. Um, but at this time I didn't want to work auto glass anymore. Uh, and I went and I pursued a job as a caregiver, uh, making about 15 bucks an hour. So I needed a more reliable car. Uh, and I ended up buying a Volkswagen Jetta for like 6,000 something dollars. Um, and that was a more reliable car. It was newer and stuff like that, but that car was just really boring. It was boring as hell. So about like two months, I think after buying it, I sold it again for a profit, like a $500 profit, because I got a good deal. And then I went and I bought an Audi A5 from an auction. So that car was cool, but it had a ton of issues and I was like terrified of even driving it. Uh, so I ended up selling it as soon as I could and I took a $400 loss. So right now I have like $6,800 to my name and all of my friends are going to college and I was kind of getting like a little worried about my life because I was like, all right, like, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to be a basement dweller, like living with my mom when I'm 30? Because I don't really want to go to college. I did enroll into college to be a nurse for about two weeks. And then I was like, uh, I don't want to be a nurse and I don't want to go to school either. So I'm just going to drop out. Keep in mind at this point in my life, I don't know e-commerce is a thing. I don't know anything about what I'm doing in my life right now. So I dropped out two weeks after uh, enrolling into nursing school because I saw a video by the name, this guy named Graham Stephan. And he said, hey, you could uh, buy rental properties and then you could just rent them out and live for free and do nothing. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I wanna do with my life. So uh, I dropped out of college and I started pursuing real estate and I got my real estate license. I go to real estate school and I realized that I'm only gonna ever make money when I sell a house um, and nobody's gonna buy a house for me because I have acne and I'm 18 and I'm like chubby. Uh, and so it might take me like three years to buy a, or three years to sell a house. Uh, and that's just not, I need to make money in the meantime. So while I'm caregiving, I'm also pursuing real estate. And now while I'm at my job, my caregiving job, I'm on my computer and I'm looking up, how do I make money on the internet? And this is the point in my life in which I was introduced to e-com drop shipping. Um, and, and just this whole entire ecosystem that I'm such a big part of now. Um, so I found Dan De Silva and Thaddeus and Rory and I started my first store and guys, my first store was probably worse than every single person's first store watching this. It was so, so terrible. Um, it was like I was selling towels and then like trinkets and like candy, like just the stupidest store you've ever seen in your entire life. Um, and it didn't work. But then I watched all of Rory's videos and Rory said, yo, dude, you need to sell a niche product on a niche theme page, Instagram, Instagram theme page. Uh, and then basically you sell this product that people really like to these people and they'll buy it. So I sold lion bracelets because I had no creativity at the time and that's what everybody was selling. Uh, and it didn't really work out because like I said, everybody was selling it. So it was kind of saturated, um, but it funneled into my next one, which was accessories. And I wanted like to have a men's fashion website or a fashion website and promote this website on fashion pages on Instagram. That was my next gig. So while I was working as a caregiver, I was setting up this business and I was buying these shout outs from these little, these little pages that were like maybe 30 or 40 K um, in followers. And 
I was barely profitable with this site. It was just like either break even or just like barely ever so slightly profitable. And I was getting super discouraged because I did this for about two weeks. I know it's not a lot of time at all, but still I didn't want to spend all my money losing it. So I got discouraged and I thought to myself, hey, I should go and advertise on a really, really big page because probably make a lot more money, but they were charging a lot more money. They're charging like 300 bucks per shout out. Um, and so initially I denied them, but after a few more days of it not working, I was like, okay, I'm going to try advertising on this big page one time. And then if it doesn't work, at least I don't have to think about it in the future when I, you know, when I move on. So that was my mindset. Um, and so I did that. So I bought a shout out from a big page and I scheduled it for 8 a.m. the next morning. And I specifically remember because I had to wake up around that time to go to my caregiving job. I remember waking up to like $60 in sales and I was like, okay, like that's sick. You know, that's really cool. I don't remember what the break even was like. I think if I crossed like a hundred dollars in sales, I was break even for the shout or like 150 bucks in sales. Um, but anyway, I got in my car and I started driving to work and I remember like hearing the cha-ching on my phone. It was like ching. And then I looked down at my phone and I'm like, what the heck? And then I keep driving and it goes off again and it goes off again. And like, I think I'm about to crash because I'm looking down every two seconds and like not paying attention to the road, just like not understanding why I'm making like a lot of money right now at 8 a.m. on like a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday morning. Um, and by the time I got to my actual job, I had already made like 150 bucks in sales, which was like, it blew my mind out of the part. I was so confused as to what just happened. Um, so the day goes on and I keep making sales. I just keep going. Uh, and by the time the day was over, I had made 110 bucks from caregiving and I had made $450 from my store with this big post. And this was like an insane moment in my life where I realized that I can actually make like a lot of money from the internet. I was like, dude, all I have to do now is just scale to like a million dollars a month. You know, all I have to do is like scale to 10 million people seeing my fashion store and then I'll be rich and I can buy like a Ferrari. So what I did for the next few months was I grinded really hard working at my caregiving job. And in the meantime, while I was working there, I was working on my business and a few months and a lot of saving later, I was able to collectively have a net worth of about $15,000. So at this point I'm 18 years old and this fashion business has generated over $35,000. And I was like, dude, I need to do this again, but also I need to do it where I can make like, where I can do it more scalably. Cause like I can't really scale on Instagram. It's really hard. So I decided to learn Facebook ads and start a new store. And at that time there was a really, really trending product and it was the moon lamp. So I made a moon lamp store and I started using Facebook ads and influencer marketing together. And that store averaged about $800 a day for a few months and combined, combined that with my other store. And um, I was making a pretty, a pretty good chunk of change. And I remember this was all before Q4. So leading into Q4 um, and the buying season was coming up and stuff, the store started generating more revenue like for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and stuff. And I remember some days I made upwards of $2,500 from these stores combined, which again, just again, blew the absolute crap. Like I was blown away. Like I, I didn't even know how to react. I was like showing everyone, my family. I was like, look, like I made $2,500 today. And they're like, they're like, I don't even have $2,500 in my bank account. And I'm like, I know it's crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I worked hard and I grinded for months. And at this point in my life, my net worth was about $40,000. So at this point, dropshipping was getting really, really popular uh, in on the internet. And I noticed that I'd kind of built a reputation in like the comment sections because I was telling people like, oh, hey, this tip helped me a lot and I made a lot of money. Um, and so I had the idea to start posting YouTube videos because all of these kids were posting dropshipping videos and just getting a ton of views. And I was like, hey, I wanna get a ton of views and I wanna help people out because I remember the level of satisfaction that I had when I made that 450 bucks from my store that one day. And like what I was doing now was insane. Like it was, it made me feel so good, especially coming from where I did come from. Um, I was really happy and I was like, maybe other people can have this as well. And I wanted that to happen. So I started my YouTube channel and I started posting and almost immediately I just got views. It was, it was pretty easy for me to start. Like for some reason, I don't know why to this day, I don't know why you guys watch me and why you like the content, but people watch the content and it was great. So a few months of grinding on YouTube, posting all the time um, and things were kind of just a little stagnant. Um, so I decided I would invest more energy into it. I bought a new camera, 
had a new setup and then I posted a video and that video actually ended up going like viral. It was rank one for Shopify and it was the video how I made $991 in 14 hours. Um, everybody stole my title. I was the first one to do that, I'm pretty sure. But that video went a little bit viral. I talked about yoga pants and this and that and it started becoming the backbone of my growth. Um, and so at this point I started setting up like affiliate deals with Pexta and like started selling things on Gumroad and kind of like selling to the audience a little bit. Uh, and also with ad revenue at this point, I was making like two to four thousand dollars a month from YouTube alone. And then as I started to grow, um, I had the idea to make a course and just basically make the course exactly what I did with the influencer marketing um, and all the steps that I took and all of, you know, telling people the mistakes to avoid and pointing people in the right direction uh, and put all of those videos together into one place and sell it for 300 bucks um, because it made me a lot of money. And I was like, hey, if people just follow exactly what I did. Um, and they make money, they can just easily get a return on their investment. And a lot of people were selling courses at the time and they were making, it looked like they were making pretty good money off of them. So I was like, why not kind of help people organize information and add another income source? So I did that. And in the beginning, it was nothing crazy. I think I maybe sold like three in the first week and I was like, okay, whatever, it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna go back to YouTube and focus on growing my YouTube channel so I can increase like my ad revenue, my PEXA affiliate stuff and my Gumroad stuff. Um, and to just continue growing because it was fun and people were finding it helpful. So at this point in my life, my net worth was about $55,000. I had stopped caregiving and I had stopped focusing on real estate uh, so that I could just focus on growing my YouTube, running my dropshipping stores and just growing that part of my life. Uh, and I ended up making pretty serious money because that 991 video ended up kind of becoming viral and getting more and more views. Um, and everything was just growing and growing and growing. So the viral video that I posted was doing really well uh, and I was continuing to post content on the internet and I was getting a lot of views and I was growing really fast and the affiliate was growing fast, the ad revenue was going fast and even the course was starting to grow as well. And at this point in my life, I was making pretty serious money for my age. So I decided it was probably the right time to go out and finally buy my dream car, which was the 2014 Nissan GTR track edition and that car was dope. It was, it was such a huge accomplishment for me. So after a few months of grinding uh, and right around the time that I bought this car, my, my net worth was about $70,000. Uh, I moved out of my house. I go down to Tempe, um, grinding every single day for months and months, uh, working on YouTube, doing my dropshipping stuff, uh, saving up money as much as I could. Um, and at this point in my life, I had a really, really interesting idea. I had an idea to push my course really hard for the first time and sell it at a 33% discount for one day. Um, I got this idea from my friend Nate Schmidt because he did that with his course on Twitter and he made a lot of money that day. And I was like, I wonder what could happen. So that's exactly what I did. I did a huge shout out on Instagram and on YouTube that I was discounting my course 33% uh, for the first time ever or whatever. And uh, you could buy it now for cheaper than ever before. And I ended up making $16,000 in four hours. And I was 19 years old at this time. Uh, the first four hours I made $16,000. It was the most at that point. Um, and the feeling I got when this happened was incomparable to anything I've ever felt in my entire life. That was more money than I had ever seen in like one little city. Like that was just the most explosive amount of money I've ever made ever. My mom had never, ever seen this type of money in her life, like in one time, maybe when she sold her house and that's it. But like, this was just crazy for me. Um, by the time the day was over, I had generated over 22 grand. Um, and I was just a normal 19 year old kid. And I know that's a crazy story, um, especially because I was only 19 at the time. But up until that point, I, I hadn't even, the story doesn't end there. I Even after that, I hadn't started my biggest brand yet, which in its prime was doing 300K a month. Um, and after that, fast forward, there was a day where I did over 100K in a day profit. Um, and all of this stuff wasn't e-com or course or YouTube related because I quit YouTube for nine months. Um, and these insane ventures came after I quit YouTube. So that was insane. And, and now, even now having this digital marketing agency that I'm running now, which is my main focus, this aggregator where people bring us business, all of these things happened after I was 19. Um, and it's just crazy because I think that the first 100K in anybody's life is the hardest. Um, and that's certainly how it was for me. And that's how it is for my friends as well. Um, but once you have the capital, um, you can kind of put that money to work for you and you can kind of go and invest it and play around with it and really grow it. And that's exactly what happened. So although the story from 16 to 19 was really crazy and really interesting 
and a lot of grinding and a lot of hard work to get to that number, the story from 19 to 22 is, is even crazier. And the numbers are, are way, way crazier and way more insane. Um, and honestly, a lot less like strenuous work, but just like smarter work because I had that capital. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed that story. Um, I'm looking forward to if this video does well and you guys really enjoyed it to making maybe a second part from 19 to 22 and telling you guys about everything that I'm up to now. I'm most excited to tell you about finally breaking into real estate at a, at a higher level uh, and also about the agency that I'm running where we build and, and not build, but we help brands really scale and grow and position themselves better for acquisition and help them get sold. So I'm really, really proud of that. Uh, and I'm really excited to tell you all about that as well. So I love being transparent with you guys and maybe that's why you guys like watching me. But in this video, I told you my come up story and how I made my first hundred grand. Uh, but maybe in the next video, I can talk about how I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and how I lost all of that money, which is an insane story as well. Um, but if you guys wanna see that, please let me know, drop a comment down below, like this video. Uh, and we'll do that next.